Hello and welcome back to the Scale Modeling Cafe. My name is Jamie and welcome to the final part of the Edward S199 Mezek. Now we get to do the fun bit which is the weathering. So the first thing was I made up a wash of the ammo oil brushes. That was diluted with just enamel thinner and then just through trial and error I mixed up a tone that was ever so slightly a little bit darker than the base coat. And then this was liberally applied with a soft br uh, round brush. But as you can see, I'm avoiding the national markings because obviously they are have a white background and the contrast just would be too much. Sometimes it's difficult to avoid because capillary action will sort of wicked along panel lines and things, but You'll see how I can fix that. So it's worked into the surface with the brush, making sure every single rivet and uh, all the panel lines are covered and all the raised detail on the uh, all the fabric surfaces like the ailerons, etc. So you can see you can be quite precise with it. And then under the nose, uh, behind the nose, a darker tone was applied. So this is oil brusher, Starship Filth, neat effectively. And again, that was worked in. So you can use different tones as long as it's complementary to the base coat. And then when dry, and you can speed that up with a hairdryer, it was polished off just using a bit of kitchen towel. Now, don't apply too much pressure because it's very easy to remove all the wash otherwise. So it is literally just a gentle polish. And uh, if you think of it as a polish rather than a rubbing to, to remove the excess, you'll be uh, not too far off. So it's very easy to knock things off. So just be careful. And you can see there that I've folded up in places to try and get in the nooks and crannies. But sometimes you can't get into all the nooks and crannies. So just with the dry brush, I go in and I blend away the excess. Just blend that oil into the surrounding areas and adds to that sort of grimy and shadow effect. But if it's a little bit too harsh, you can just get a cotton bud or a Q-tip, I suppose, if you're from America, and just wipe away the excess. Now, sometimes, even though we've been very careful with applying the wash, it does get into the panel lines. But we can fix that. So with a small sort of thin brush here and just a tiny amount of thinner, we can just go in and very precise, uh, precisely blend that away. So I don't put too much thinner on. I tend to sort of just a little bit of thinner and then just take my time and you can see here that's a little bit too much contrast on the white. We don't want it looking like a grid pattern after all. So we're just going to go in and we're just going to blend away some of that excess paint. Just drying it off with a cotton bud. And I just keep going back in and repeating and repeating until I'm happy with the final, uh, the final look of it. not 
for getting the numbers as well at the back. So there's a close up and you can see all the rivets and the panel lines and the contrast is not too high. Okay, next step, we need to seal all that in. So I'm using a coat of varnish. This is VMS Satin. The matte varnish is very good, but it does tend to suck out all the light and leave a bit of a, a lifeless looking model as it absorbs everything. So the satin is, it's still kind of matte, but has an, a nice authentic sheen to it. So I use a relatively high air pressure and what I'll do is apply the product and then cut to air to dry it off. It does say stay soft for a little while so I tend to leave it for at least an hour because you can easily scratch it. Okay more weathering now and onto the paint chipping. So I'm going to use the sponge method which I used in the cockpit as well. So just using a bit of ammo of MIG steel on a piece of torn sponge, removing the excess and then just very lightly dabbing around the place. Think about where the chips are, so around the canopy sill, the leading edge, anywhere that's going to get scuffed up with hands and feet essentially. And if you do a little bit too much, it's not a problem. Just a bit of um, acrylic thinner and a brush and you could just wash it away. Well, I was lucky here. I didn't need to do that. But it's not very precise. So um, I did go in with a fine brush, as you can see, and with some thinned paint, because you do need to thin it with a little bit of water. I just went in and I just touched in some areas, added some very fine chips, filled in a few more areas. So it's just picking the right tool and technique for the effect you're trying to achieve really. Right now we're going to have some more fun. So on with some oil dot weathering. So because it's quite a matte finish, yes it's satin but it is, you know, it, it, it is fairly matte. I dampen the area with a little bit of thinner. If you don't do that, then you can actually stain the surface with the oil dots and you'll have a nightmare trying to blend it in. So by pre-dampening the area, you're not going to get that. So I'm using a bit of white, a bit of flesh. This is a um, like a mud brown colour. And then I'm going to use some darker tones, some black and some starship filth. And just take note of where I'm putting the colours. So the darker tones in areas of shadow, the lighter tones on the flat areas and the highlighted areas, and just a few little spots of the darker tone here and there, just to add a bit of tonal variation. And then once that's all been applied, we can go in with a moist brush and just start blending. So a little bit of a sort of little red riding hood here. So not too damp, otherwise you'll wash it away. Not too dry, otherwise you won't be able to blend it properly. Um, so it's just a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of practice. And we go in and we just blend those oils in. I'll clean the brush regularly, otherwise you end up mixing all the colours really into a single tone and we don't want to do that. And I don't normally just do this in one go, so I'll go back in, I'll add some more highlights where I want it, uh, and some more low lights here and there. And I'll just keep going backwards and forwards until I'm happy. So. Once all that's blended in, we can hit it with a hairdryer to dry it off, just very briefly. And you'll see it, um, the thinner flash off. And then we can go in with the dry brush now and just do the final blending bits. A 
and you can actually even use your finger really but I do like the control the brush gives So there we are, that's the left hand wing done, so just take a note of the uh, the final effect there and we'll compare it to the other wing that hasn't had the treatment yet. Okay, so I've done the initial round on the fuselage and I wasn't entirely convinced it was finished, so I wanted a little bit more fading, so hence I added a little bit more white here and there. And then just note where I've actually put the black. So it's around the nooks and crannies and the lumps and bumps. And along some of the panel lines. So we're going to come in and we're going to do the exhaust staining later and a little bit of post shading. So effectively this is kind of the next intermediate, if you like, layer. Just adding to that grimy oily effect. And again, just using a little bit of thought where I want the shadow, where I want the grime. And then what you can do is stop your blending a little bit early and then switch to the dry brush. And then you'll get a stronger effect then because you haven't blended in so much some of the oil paints. That's especially useful with the, uh, with the black around the, uh, around the exhaust there. So as you can see, I've switched to the dry brush now. And there is one grimy, highlighted and low-lighted uh, S199 nose. Okay, oil streaking now. So I've got some black oil brusher here from Ammo and I'm just drawing in where I want the streaks. Piston engined aeroplanes, especially single engine fighters, tended to leak. Some more than others. Now, I don't have any photographs of the S199, but plenty of Spitfires and 109s, etc. You, uh, you can use for inspiration. So, we apply the oil paint, and then we're going to let that sort of flash off for a little bit and then we'll come in with the moist flat brush and we'll just gently streak it back now i normally take at least two or three layers of this because i'm always adding taking away manipulating and we can have some real good fun here so that's kind of effectively end of part one on the streaking and now we're going to come back in and do a little bit more so we can up enhance it in certain areas especially behind sort of bulges and things like that and you can see there I've just got some on the ETC rack that's not a problem we can just uh, remove that with a bit of thinner and a pointy brush and now we're going to go in again with the flat brush and a little bit of thinner and start streaking it back And what I tend to do as well is keep cleaning the brush, otherwise um, you're going to lose some of that control because you're going to contaminate the brush. And there's the finished oily belly. Okay, exhaust staining now. So again, looking at pictures, I uh, I noticed there was a uh, an exhaust stain present. Not as prominent as some of the late war ME109s, but it was certainly visible against the light camouflage. So I mixed up a bit of Tamiya black, red, brown, neutral gray, and a bit of buff. And then it's a question of slowly building up the effect. As I say, I didn't want it too dark, not too much contrast. So better to build it up slowly because this is going to be relatively difficult to undo 
You're gonna have to go back in with some base coat, really. And then if we take off the cap, we've got a lot more control. It can get a much finer line. So just a few vertical strokes on the exhaust stain and then just a bit of post shading around some of the panel lines and around the gun troughs to simulate a bit of cordite staining, but not too much, not too heavy. And that's just adding to all the oil work that we did before, just building up that sort of grimy nose. Oops, nearly dropped it. Oh, no, I did drop it. Ouch. And then switching to the underside, again, straight to the, uh, the center line, really, where it's going to be most grubby. And just enhancing some of those panel lines with this post shading technique. And we're going to go along and do some of the uh, some of the oil streaking as well over the top just to enhance that and to blend that in a little bit further and then I do do around some of the raised detail and in the nooks and crannies as well but less and less as you go away from the center line so we don't want to completely um, sort of even right across the whole airframe we're just going to use a little bit of thought in where we're going to do this effect if you look at pictures of aeroplanes, they don't they don't weather evenly across the entire airframe. And again, switching back to the nose. And just enhancing that exhaust. So the exhaust was painted with black first, dry brush in silver, then a very light, thin coat of uh, XF64 red brown and then followed by a track wash so that's how I did the exhaust and exhausts aren't really rusty they are certainly a burnt color but they're not rusty not in an in-service aeroplane anyway and again enhancing some of the shadows getting into the wing roots the exhaust stain did go onto the wing roots as well so again, using those reference photos can be really, uh, really helpful. And there we go, there's the finished grimy effect. Right, the gun barrels. So. They were protected in this latex mask, uh, Mr. Neo or whatever it's called from Mr. Hobby. So that was peeled off. And then we're gonna go in and give it a little bit of a polish. A Little bit of the mask just got stuck in the opening there because you have to mount the gun barrels when you sandwich the, um, sandwich the two halves of the pod together so you've got to do it before. And then this is the photo etch burnishing fluid, again from Ammo of MIG. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna paint it on. Now, I filmed this in real time, so I'm not gonna speed it up. Uh, I'm not gonna cut bits out, just so you can appreciate how long it takes. So initially, you keep painting it on, just keep working the area. And you think, well, not much is happening. But patience, young Padawan. We just need to uh, take our time and just, just keep it wet, is what I'll say. So we'll leave the other one. We'll just start the process off on the, uh, on the other gun barrel. Now, the nose guns, they were put in a little pot and left for five minutes or so. But here you can see it's tarnishing now and we get a really nice kind of dark burnt color so gun barrels they are treated um, I don't know exactly the process but it's called blackening so they'll blacken the steel makes it heat resistant and uh, and not so brittle and you see look that's just been a minute or two and we get quite a nice burnt effect But we're still not quite there. It's still a little bit too brown at the moment. So just keep adding the product. 
until you've got the uh, the sort of patina and the tone that you're after. And it is quite difficult sometimes to keep it in shot, especially when you've zoomed in so much. So apologies for that. But I'll realise in a second and move it back into shot. So now I'm happy with the appearance. I'm just going to go in with a cotton bud now. And I'm just going to remove the product, dry it off, just to stop the, uh, the reaction. And there we go. So there's a little bit of a shine there, but you can see the, that real nice blackened sort of hot metal effect. Okay, the tail wheel. I did actually snap this off quite early in construction. So it was drilled, a pin inserted, which was quite a nice handy handle actually for painting the tail wheel. And then just a little bit of super glue and that was added. But the bonus of this is you can set it to any angle you want really. Okay, onto the wheels now. So uh, they were painted. So this is MRP black in the middle. I painted that first, then I painted the tyre in tyre black from Guns. And then what I did is I added the masks that you get in the set, and then I just touched in the, uh, the black, which is nice and glossy, just like the real thing. So then when you pull off the, um, the mask, that's what it looks like. This is very fine lead wire that I formed up into the brake hose shape added to the gear leg there. I think that's a better option than using the photo etch, which is flat, obviously. Some more chipping, this time on the spinner. You can see it's had a wash and some uh, oil paint just blended in, just for a little bit of sort of grimy effect there. And the same on the prop. And I actually dry brushed with the sponge using the metal. So you get that kind of nice airflow chipping effect, if you like, and then concentrating around the, the top of the blade, because that's where the most wear is. Now, the undercarriage mounting is absolutely brilliant on this. You would have seen from the construction episode, episode three, that um, it's actually attached to the, to the bottom of the cockpit. And then it's a really nice, sturdy, uh, lug that goes in and it sets the angle which is brilliant really innovative love that and then the wheels are actually keyed so adding a bit of super glue and then slightly rotating the wheel until it just sits in place and there's two settings you can have for the wheel so this particular aeroplane the tire the wheel and tire was more perpendicular to the ground rather than parallel to the gear leg and then we can just uh, set that down and allow that super glue to dry off and go hard. We're almost there, look. Finishing off now. So the canopy was masked off on the inside and sprayed. The armor was added and then masked off also the outside uh, and the inside was, was masked off as well. And then as I paint and do layers of varnishing and washes, etc., I do the canopy as well. Otherwise it's gonna look too fresh. So you want it in keeping with the rest of the weathering, etc., so it doesn't look out of place. It looks part of the airframe. And thank goodness for the canopy masks. And that's ready to be glued onto the model now. The DF loop at the back, that was painted and then added with a bit of super glue, but I did have to go in and just touch it in with the brush because it didn't really stick too well. And there's the kind of finished cockpit. Looks pretty cool, I think. Now for some desert weathering and pigments. So I use these, these two tones from Ammo of MIG. And we're just gonna put in copious amounts of this stuff and dry blend it into the undercarriage. 
and you'll see in a second I'll do the tail wheel in the rear fuselage as well just where the dust is going to accumulate and I use both different tones at the same time they're, they're, they're a little bit similar but you're just going to get a little bit more tonal variation if you just use um, at least two different types of pigment two different colors two different tones and then onto the tail wheel and you can see it just kind of it goes everywhere but what I do is using the little brush is I'll just blend it in where I want with the dry brush and then you can just give it a blow and get rid of any excess and doing the rear fuselage in the bottom of the rudder as well because obviously that's going to get quite dusty and then we'll just come in with a bit of thinner on a on a brush soft brush and just blend that in and then with the dry brush we'll blend away some of the excess and then we'll blend the edge of the thinner otherwise you're going to get tide marks so this does two things it it blends the pigment but it also allows it to flow in the nooks and crannies and then using a hairdryer we're just going to come in and you can see how quickly that dries but because we've used thinner and not pigment fixer we can still manipulate it so using a finger or a thumb if we just gently stroke the part we'll just remove the pigment off the high spots leaving the pigment in the uh, in the recesses and then again we can use a dry brush to go in and just do the final bit of blending you could set this with a bit of pigment fixer if you wanted but um, I tend to find that ends up a little bit glossy then you've got to go in with varnish and you kind of lose some of the effect so I just I just do a little bit of dry brushing here and just leave it as is And we're pretty much there now so um, we're just gonna fiddle around with the prop make sure we got that at the right angle and the aeroplane is finished I didn't do an aerial wire because I thought it might look a little bit odd with the um, with the canopy open to be honest so that's it it's all finished so my thoughts on this particular model then um, are Oh, really good I can't praise it highly enough I think it's arguably the best 172 scale model that's out there that's on the market the cockpit detail is great and you can go and buy a resin one if you want but I don't think it needs it frankly the external detail is absolutely superb the rivets even though on here they may look a little bit overdone that's just the camera exaggerating them in real life they're really fine really restrained and it results in a lovely lovely model and it's innovative in some of the areas as well so the way the undercarriage is mounted um, it it sets the angle rock solid it's absolutely brilliant and it really bodes well for the 48th um, one which I'm sure is bound to come soon and I know they're going to do the 109k and I'm hoping they take these ideas forward in that one as well. But overall, it's a beautiful model. And here's the check one. So I have done this as a, as a photo build and I will be sending that into a magazine. Don't know which one yet. But there you can see the bubble canopy. This is the other one you get in the box. And they're just beautiful models. I can't speak highly enough of them. They are fantastic. So thank you very very much for watching i'll just leave you with a few more images and i'll see you on the next video bye bye